So we're going to keep going with the same example, but just talk about a few more definitions here. So we do have what are what is called the midpoint. So the midpoint of the class is like you would expect as the halfway point of that class. So what you can do to find it is take the lower and upper limits of that class and divide it by two. So it's really just an average um, and it marks the middle of that class. So going back to our example here, um, what we could do, and I'll just do it in a different color for instance, is if you're trying to find the midpoint, You take that class and you take the lower value and the upper value and you divide it by two. And that gives you the midpoint, that kind of the halfway point of the class. Um, so let's see, in this case, we get 172.5. And then the same thing for the next one. You could take 191 and 226, add those first, then divide by two and you get 208.5. Here we do 227 and 262. Add those together and divide by two, and we get 244.5, um, and so on. So I won't uh, write all the others out. I'll just show you the answers, um, and you can try it at home. Here you get 280.5, 316.5, 284.5, So we can find the midpoint as well. Now that midpoint is going to be helpful in our next lecture and the rest of section 2.1 when we're doing things like histograms. We're going to use that midpoint to help us graph. So that's really more so where it's going to come in later on. Not so much as important today, but it's going to help us a lot with our graphing. Now there are two other kinds of frequency tables we can do. The first is with a relative frequency, and the second is with a cumulative frequency, and we do see these as well. So a relative frequency um, is pretty much like a percent. Um, usually we leave it in decimal form, or I guess it could be decimal or percent form. Um, but instead of doing the count, you're looking at the percent of that interval, like how much does that interval take up? So to find it, you take the frequency for that class, and divide it by N. So that's the total sample size. So that's how we do our relative frequencies. And then our cumulative frequencies is actually a sum. So we're adding that frequency each time. So let me pause for a second and show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm not gonna rewrite the midpoints here because I have those on the other page for you. I'm just gonna rewrite the classes. So this process is a little slow. Um, I'm not going to lie, but it's not overly difficult. It's just a lot of steps. So you want to just really try it out yourself um, and kind of go through the motions. So as you're watching the video, you may be saying, oh, that's easy. I know how to count things. I know how to tally. I know how to take an average. Um, and that's fine, too. But like I said, it's good to just go through it on your own and kind of see how that process works. So I'm gonna rewrite the frequency. So we had three, two, five, six, seven, four, and three. And I'm gonna start with this relative frequency. So I'm gonna just make another column here. Sometimes people will do these tables as separate, like do this as one table and then do like a separate table for relative frequency. So I'm just gonna combine it. Now, again, this could be in decimal form or sometimes you'll see percent form. Most of the time it's decimal form. But what you do is you take your frequency from here. So I would take that three and I divide it by my total. So remember in this case, our total, that total sum was 30. So you take that three and you divide it by 30. 
And you can just use your calculator here. Three divided by 30 is 0 0.1. And then for the next one, you're gonna do two divided by 30 and you get 0 0.7. Five divided by 30, you're gonna get 0 0.17. So some of these I'm rounding. Um, you can just round to like two decimal places or maybe three if you need it. Here, I'm gonna do six divided by 30, which is 0 0.2 even. Then I have seven divided by 30. So we're rounding here again, 0 0.23 approximately. And then four divided by 30 is about um, 0 0.13 and three divided by 30 is about 0 0.1. So when you add these all up, if you're doing the decimals, you should get a sum of one. Now, if you get like 0 0.99 um, nine or like 1.01, .01, something really close to one, then you're probably okay. You may just have a little bit of a rounding error because you had to round some of these values, but you really should be right at one. If you're using the percent form, then you're just taking these numbers and multiplying it by 100 to get the percent. So that would give you 10%, um, uh, let's see, 10%, hang on, I'm missing something. Here. Sorry, I'm missing the zero there, I apologize. Zero, seven, zero, seven, so 7%, 17%, 20%, 23%, 13%, 10%. So we can multiply by 100 to get percents, and then you should add to 100% at the end instead. So that's your relative frequency. Now your cumulative frequency is just a, a sum. So what you're doing is you're taking your first frequency of three and then you're adding it together. So here I have a two. So I'm gonna do um, this two plus three is five. And then I'm gonna add in the next group. So now I have three plus two plus five is 10. And then the next group. So I have three plus two plus five plus six is 16. 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. So 16 plus 7 is going to be 23. Then I'm adding in 4 more, which would give me 27. And then I'm adding in 3 more, which would give me 30. So your final row should be um, that same sample size. So that is a cumulative frequency table. Cumulative means to add up or incorporate everything. So if I give you a cumulative exam, it means it's on everything. So we're adding them up row by row uh, and kind of collecting all those data points. So that is your cumulative frequency table. Um, and again, we can always do this in separate tables. If you find this confusing all at one, you can make kind of one table for this, then do another table with the classes that just has the frequency, and then do another table that has the classes and the cumulative. So that works too. One more definition I want to talk about here, which again, we're going to use a lot more when we get to the histograms in the next lectures. Um, and that would be the class boundaries. So your class boundaries are the numbers in between the classes. Um, so it's basically that half uh, waypoint. between the classes. So for instance, notice here, my first class ends at 190 and my next class starts at 191. So the halfway point between those, which would be 190.5 is my boundary point. Okay, so your boundary points occur in between the classes. It's that average or that halfway point between all your classes. Now, when you're dealing with whole numbers, then your boundary point's always gonna have a half in it, right? Cause it's gonna be the halfway point. Your classes don't have to have whole numbers though. We tend to see that most often, but you can have classes that have fractions and decimals and things like that. So it's still the halfway point between um, the two, okay? So see, I'm running out of room here. Maybe we'll just try to squeeze them in uh, kind of above and below. So, when you're finding your halfway points, what you can do for the boundary points is take the average. So here you're going from the upper to the lower. So I would do 190 plus 191 and divide that by two. Okay. 
So that's going to be 190.5. So that 190.5, it looks a little funny, but it's kind of like right there in between. And then I would do the next group. So 226 to 227. And we get 226.5. So again, that's going to be your boundary point in between. From here to here, it's going to be 262.5. And then 298.5. 334.5. And 370.5. And again, I'm just finding the average between the upper and the next lower limit. Because it's whole numbers, it's easy. I just put that 0.5. But if it's decimals, you do the same thing. You're just going to find that average and divide it by two. Now, you do have boundaries on the end, though. So follow the pattern. Notice the pattern here was I would just add a half to each upper limit. So here, my boundary point would be 406.5. And then on this end, Notice that I would just subtract a half from each lower limit, right? So 263 minus a half is 262.5. So I can do that here too, just follow that pattern. This would be 154.5 as my lower boundary. So we're gonna talk more about boundary points, again, when we get to histograms. But those boundary points are also really important in our graphs. A lot of times we use our boundary points to graph histograms and other forms of graphs rather than the actual class values. So those boundary points and those class midpoints, again, are particularly helpful when graphing and particularly with histograms because they just allow us to set up our histogram a little bit nicer. We typically use the boundary points or the midpoints as like our tick marks on our axis. Um, so we'll see that then.